Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Heart disease, cardiovascular disease, the number one killer across the United States, China, and India. It claims lives every single year, and if it's not claiming lives through heart attacks, it's causing immense suffering to people. It's causing a change in lifestyle. It's not allowing people to live life the way it's supposed to be lived. And cholesterol, that's one of the most common household names across the world today. High cholesterol, heart disease, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, triglycerides, cholesterol-lowering drugs, statins. Today, I want to take time out to explain to you the truth behind cholesterol. For the longest time, this whole word cholesterol has demonized eggs, saturated fat, animal fat, and has been attributed to the number one cause of heart disease. What if I told you right now that cholesterol has little or no connection to heart attacks, strokes, and cardiovascular disease. So for that, we're gonna to have to understand exactly what cholesterol is. 75% of your cholesterol is produced by your liver, and your body requires cholesterol for so many different functions, right from cell repair to growing new cell membrane, the production of vitamin D, the production of other hormones, Cholesterol is required for good health. It is required for your memory. It's required for neurological health. And there are connections today with low cholesterol levels to Alzheimer's, low cholesterol levels to cancer, low cholesterol levels to Parkinson's, low cholesterol levels to diabetes, low cholesterol levels to neuromuscular pains, joint pain, aches, <clears throat> dizziness, bloating, inability to lose weight, low vitamin D levels. And I'm gonna explain exactly how this works. When you look at your cholesterol, you look at HDL, which is your good cholesterol, your high density lipoproteins. It has a function of cleaning bad cholesterol out of your arteries, removing plaque. So you want high levels of good cholesterol, HDL. And then you have LDL, which is your low density lipoproteins. That's your bad cholesterol. But again, we shouldn't be fooled or worried with high levels of LDL because LDL can be further broken down, which no doctors look at today. In fact, no medical community looks at. You have large LDL particles, which do not cause a problem to the heart, and you have small particles LDL, which cause a potential problem to the heart. Then you have triglycerides, and that's the dangerous part. When you have extremely high levels of triglycerides, picture this as fats, flowing all through your arteries, doing plaque buildups in your arteries, which can eventually cause clots in your brain, in your lower artery, leading to strokes, leading to paralysis of the body. Triglyceride levels have to be maintained. And then you have <clears throat> your total cholesterol, which is something that all doctors look at today. They look at total cholesterol, and if it's over range, they put you on a cholesterol-lowering drug, or they put you onto a statin. And I'm saying today right here that that is absolutely unnecessary because when you look at lipid profile you need to look at your HDL ratio with your LDL you need to look at your triglyceride ratio with your LDL and your HDL you break it down you don't look at your total cholesterol you can have high levels of total cholesterol but if your HDL is good you do not require medication even if your LDL is on the higher side but your HDL is good you do not require medication now, if your triglycerides are extremely high, that puts you in a potential high-risk category and you need to make immediate lifestyle changes to bring down your triglycerides. Triglyceride levels rise from eating too many of the wrong grains, sugars, being physically inactive, too much of smoking, drinking alcohol excessively, and being overweight, obese, and constantly stressed out. That is what causes high triglyceride levels. The second myth that cholesterol leads on to heart attacks, absolutely zero connection. In my line of work, and many people out there will also realize that heart attacks never occurred from high cholesterol levels. Heart attacks occur from inflammation in your arteries. Heart attacks occur from high blood pressure, which is poorly managed. Heart attacks occur when your triglycerides are extremely high and your good cholesterol is extremely low. So we never look at total cholesterol and your doctor should look 
at far beyond your total cholesterol levels. They should look at your HDL profile, your LDL profile, teach you how to increase your HDL. It's a ratio so that your LDL comes down. They should coach you, we should coach you on how to bring down your triglyceride levels naturally. Because I'm going to soon be talking about statins and the deadly side effects of cholesterol medication. But first, let's go on to understand a little more about cholesterol. Cholesterol is neither bad nor it's good for you, but you need the right amount of cholesterol. If you are taking drugs to lower your cholesterol, you are creating immense issues in your body. Your next blood report may look really, really good because your statin or your cholesterol medication helped you statistically show a reduction in your total cholesterol. But it didn't contribute to your HDL levels going up, which puts you in a safer category and a lower risk zone than just having a lower number in your total cholesterol. You have to understand that cholesterol is a precursor to steroid hormones. You cannot make estrogen, you cannot make testosterone, your body cannot make cortisone if you have low cholesterol levels. You need cholesterol for hormonal health. You need cholesterol for vitamin D3 levels. The UVB rays of the sun interact with cholesterol in your body to make vitamin D. So if you have low cholesterol levels, you have a deficiency of vitamin D at the same time. If you have low vitamin D levels, your liver gets a signal to produce more cholesterol because your body wants to naturally increase vitamin D levels. So sometimes if we run to the doctor with high cholesterol levels, only by fixing your deficiency of vitamin D will tell your liver to stop producing more cholesterol because your body will keep producing whatever it needs for whatever it requires to keep your bodily functions working every second of the day. So when you have low vitamin D levels, you are automatically signaling to your body to produce more cholesterol, which is why having optimum vitamin D levels is extremely important when it comes to handling cholesterol. So when you're put on a, on a cholesterol drug, doctors don't look at deficiencies of vitamin D. That's the first thing that we need to look at. Secondly, like I said, the connection between heart disease has nothing to do with cholesterol. It is inflammation. And what exactly is inflammation? Let me explain this right now. So you fall down and you get hurt. You get a cut. Your body immediately inflames around that area to protect your good cells. Now, with inflammation, your blood cells constrict so that you don't bleed to death. Your blood thickens so that it can clot then your immunity starts producing cells, white blood cells, chemicals that can kill pathogens, viruses, and bacteria so that it doesn't infect you. <clears throat> when that happens, the cells around the infected area start rapidly multiplying to heal and repair itself. And then you have a scar that forms. All this is your body's natural defense mechanism, immunity. It produces inflammation to protect you. Now take that same concept back to your arteries. When you constantly eat the wrong food, when you have poor circulation due to inactivity, you're eating sugar, you're eating too much of salt, you have a diet that is not rich in plants, in fruits, in nuts, in seeds, you start damaging the endothelial cells in your arteries. Inflammation sets in. Natural body's response to damage, cellular damage, there's inflammation. So now again, there's constriction of your arteries, which means less blood flow. What also happens is your blood thickens to form clotting of your blood. And all of a sudden, because of all this, you have high blood pressure. And over time, this inflammation keeps your blood pressure high. And high blood pressure can form clots in your brain, in your arteries, in any part of your body, which eventually leads to a stroke, paralysis, cardiac arrest, death. Note very clearly, cholesterol has not fitted into this little picture that I just drew for you. I have not even mentioned cholesterol because cholesterol has nothing to do with heart attacks and strokes. Yes, 
If your triglycerides are way over 350 and you have very low HDL levels, you are in a danger zone and you have to work rapidly with your lifestyle and nutrition to reduce that. But again, inflammation in your arteries is what causes heart disease. No one checks CRP levels. Ever since I moved to India, I make each and every patient and client check CRP. C, like cat, reactive protein. It is a measure of inflammation. I am appalled that even heart patients don't get their CRP levels checked. No doctors ask them to check CRP before a bypass surgery, after a bypass surgery, and ask them why. CRP is a measure of inflammation in your body. If your CRP levels are high, you need to be worried. You need to be concerned that there is inflammation anywhere in your body. It could be in your brain. It could be in your arteries. It could be forming a disease. Cancer is an inflammatory disease. And yet, most oncologists, most patients will not be asked to check their CRP levels. If I see a high CRP, I know there's inflammation in your body. My first job is to bring down your inflammation because when you bring down your inflammation, you allow the body to heal. When you bring down inflammation in your arteries, you allow your cholesterol levels, your lipid profile to fall in place. But no amount of drugs will reduce that. And in fact, most of the drugs that you're on be it your high blood pressure medication, your statins, your cholesterol medication, produces more inflammation. So your CRP levels become the most important level for you to check when you have heart disease or for that matter any disease. The longer there's inflammation in your body, the more high risk you are to any possible disease out there, including diabetes. The second thing about cholesterol, did you know that your cholesterol levels are directly proportionate to your insulin levels? What I mean by this is, if your body's producing more insulin because you have insulin insensitivity or diabetes, your liver is also producing more cholesterol. So insulin levels go up, cholesterol levels go up. Insulin levels come down, cholesterol levels come down. So now a diabetic will automatically have higher levels of cholesterol because of high insulin levels. But what do we do? We start taking a drug for diabetes, and we start taking a separate drug to lower cholesterol without failing to understand that that is the natural way the body works. If your insulin levels go up, your cholesterol levels go up. So work on bringing down your sugar levels, work on controlling your insulin, and you automatically bring down your cholesterol levels. That is the connection between insulin and cholesterol. So again, it comes down to what you eat. If you constantly eat foods like sugars, processed foods, bad carbohydrates, and you keep your insulin levels high all the time, your cholesterol levels are also going to be high. Because your body needs so much more cholesterol to produce more hormones to keep you healthy. Estrogen, cortisone, testosterone, everything that gets depleted because of the bad food that we eat. And we react, we run to a doctor who puts us on a pill. And then you're on one pill for diabetes, another for cholesterol, and another pill to manage the side effect of both those pills, your cholesterol medication and your diabetic medication. And then you have high blood pressure medication. And now let's move on to the third function of cholesterol, which is repairing your cells. So if you're constantly damaging the cells in your arteries because of your lifestyle, you're constantly getting injured because of overtraining, you're constantly you constantly have inflammation in your body, your body's going to produce more and more cholesterol because that's what it uses to repair your cells. That's what it, reduces, it uses to reduce inflammation. So if I come across a cancer patient who's on cholesterol medication, the first thing I do is get them off their medication because I want their body to produce more cholesterol. I need more cholesterol in their body to repair cells. All cancers originate from a cell. I need cells to be repaired. I need cholesterol. I don't need a drug to lower cholesterol levels. Either ways, most of the cardiac arrests that happen with a cancer patient is because of the side effects of a badly managed chemo and radiation. Likewise, if you're on a high blood pressure medication, okay, and you're just taking a medication to reduce your pressure so it looks good on your paper, you are eventually going to have a clot and paralysis and a stroke if you don't manage it with lifestyle as well because it is your job to reduce inflammation. You need cholesterol to repair your cells. And where do you find cholesterol? In all the foods that we've been fooled with over the last few years, the egg yolk, 
saturated fats like ghee, coconut oil, olive oil, all of these fats produce the right amount of cholesterol, the right amount of enzymes. We need those fats for the right amount of cholesterol. Just because you eat high cholesterol foods doesn't mean you have high cholesterol. Your liver produces an X amount of cholesterol every day. If you're getting it from another source, like your food, seafood, deep fried food, your liver will automatically produce less of it. Now when you have bad lifestyle mixed with too much of cholesterol foods, poor circulation, too much of inflammation in your body, that's when you have excessive cholesterol in your body. Coming down to statins, if you are on a statin, you should be sitting across the table with your doctor asking him for the side effects of this deadly drug, which has literally no connection to saving people's lives. There are enough of studies out there and I get to see the side effects of people on statins, right from dizziness to bloating to flatulence to neuromuscular damage to muscle fatigue to the wasting of muscles, softening of the bones, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, loss of memory. Yes, statins, side effects. Please ask your doctors about the side effects of statins. Let me tell you how a statin works. A statin works by inhibiting an enzyme that your liver uses to produce cholesterol. So a statin gets into your liver and forcibly stops the production of an enzyme that produces cholesterol. But right now I told you why we need cholesterol. So you're literally interfering with the dynamics of the human body. The same pathway and the same statin also depletes your body of something called coenzyme Q10, commonly known as CoQ10. This is an extremely important antioxidant that the mitochondria of your cell uses to produce energy, cellular energy. And your statin and your cholesterol drug is depleting you of this enzyme, which means you're lowering your immunity, you're increasing inflammation, you're inviting disease. And like I always keep saying, if you're on an antibiotic, you should take a probiotic and a Becacil, something that most doctors miss on telling you. If you are on a statin or if you're on a high blood pressure medication or you're on a cholesterol lowering medication, you should be prescribed a CoQ10 supplement, a CoQ10 plant-based supplement. If it's not CoQ10, ubiquinol. If you're aged over 50, you have to take these two things that can replenish the antioxidant that your statin or your cholesterol medication is depleting. And that's why there is no cure to cardiovascular disease today. That's why it's one thing after another, high blood pressure and then a cardiac arrest or a clot or a stroke and then surgeries and you're in that vicious trap. We need doctors, we need surgery, we need bypass, we need cholesterol drugs, but we need people to tell us how to use it the right way because all of this is creating more damage, more sickness, more financial stress on everyone. And each and every one of us out there go on popping pills because we want that little blood report to look good. And because of that, we don't make lifestyle changes because a little pill that you're popping in with immense side effects is making some statistic, some number on paper look good. And so you don't make lifestyle changes. But let me tell you right now that cholesterol is one of the easiest things to manage with, li with lifestyle changes. Optimize your vitamin D levels. Most people have low vitamin D levels. Optimize it, your cholesterol will come down. Reduce your intake of bad carbohydrates, refined sugar, white flour, all of that stuff. Even fructose. Don't overdo it on fruits. If you have more fructose from fruits that your body can't break down, your triglyceride levels will get impacted. Include heart-friendly foods like your omega-3, from flax seeds, from good fish, from avocados, from the egg yolk, from nuts, from seeds, from coconut oil, from ghee. Exercise. Exercise is what increases your HDL. Omega-3 from flax seeds or fish is what increases your HDL. Walnuts increase your HDL. Circulation of your blood can be promoted only with exercise. You have to be active. It's useless your one hour workout if you're inactive for the next nine hours and you're sitting on a chair. Total activity will reduce your cholesterol levels and get you off your drugs. Reduce your stress levels, pranayama, yoga, meditation, deep breathing, reduces cortisol levels, reduces cholesterol levels, reduces high blood pressure. Your high blood pressure pill is only showing you a good number on paper. It is not making you better. You have to integrate lifestyle 
along with your medication if you want to get better or if you want to get off medication. Sleep. When you sleep, your cholesterol levels get balanced. When you sleep, your cortisol levels come down. So make sure you have enough of sleep. Excessive alcohol. I meet more than five people in a day who say, oh, Luke, I don't drink for six days in a week, but the seventh day I binge drink. You're better off drinking every single day in moderation rather than having binge drinking because binge drinking means more inflammation in your liver, more carbohydrates. Inflammation is your biggest enemy. Inflammation is the bitch that causes problems. So you're binge drinking. There's nothing great about it. Excessive smoking puts arterial pressure on your arteries, restricting, constricting it. And that's how it leads to heart disease. So balance in everything. All the oils that you've been running after, using olive oil for Indian cooking, you're adding more toxins and free radicals which creates more inflammation in your body. Use the right local oil that you grew up on. Coconut oil, mustard oil, peanut oil, pure oils, nut oils, unsaturated, polyunsaturated, vegetable oils, canola, all of these oils are rubbish. They're creating more inflammation. They're refined so much that they actually put more inflammation in your system. It may increase your cholesterol. I don't care about your cholesterol. I'm bothered about your inflammation because cholesterol is not the problem. Include more probiotics, more fermented foods because the cleaner you keep your gut, that's where 85% of your immunity is born. Absorption of nutrients into your cells to make your cells stronger happen when you have the right ratio of gut bacteria. And that's exactly what cholesterol and heart disease is all about fiber-rich foods. I can guarantee you, if you have a cholesterol issue, move to a plant-based diet. Have more fruits, have more vegetables, have more nuts, have more seeds. Cut out your outside eating for a while. You will not require a medication. And I'll now take that time to put in this disclaimer. Please do not get off your medication without prior approval from your doctor. I said it. But now I'm also here to tell you that it is in your control. Everything I just told you. Stop getting fooled with everything that's happened around and understand the anatomy of the human body, the working of your human body. It's beautiful. God didn't make anything that's useless for us. Cholesterol is a requirement. It's just a poorly managed disease. So take it in your own control. <clears throat> it is extremely easy for you to get off cholesterol drugs and statins, but you have to do your bit. The doctor is not wrong. When he puts you on a statin or a high blood pressure pill because you're refusing to change your lifestyle, you're better off being on a pill then. But like I said, you will suffer from the consequences and side effects of every drug that you put into your body. So until next time, <clears throat> eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. It is a mind-body connect. Disease is in your hands and within your control. You need that conviction, confidence. You've got to stop listening to multiple crap that's going on and believing in the healing power of your own body, in nature and in your own ability. Thank you, everyone.